Howdy, Beef Lombard here, and welcome. Okay, as the tittle kind of you now lends to itself here, uh, we're going to work on a sniper zoom mechanism to go along with uh, binoculars and some other stuff too. But quick rundown of what's going on here, and I'm going to run this one player just right now. Everything that you're going to see in here is replicated and working for a multiplayer. So let's hit play. And we have our character, just one basic character for right now. Anytime you see these red barrels here, they are explosive. And for right now, um, you see you got um, a count for how many grenades you have and how many mines that you have. Temporarily, until I get a good fix for them, I'm going to remove them. For right now, if you hit the V key, it's going to carry you into a first-person mode, and it's going to allow you to shoot. I will work on getting proper weapons and everything else in the character's hands and the right animations, but that's not necessary yet because I'm in the testing phase. So, if you are too close to an exploding barrel and you shoot it enough to blow it up, it throws you back into third-person view, and you die and for right now the respawn mechanism just spawns you up into the air and you float down and there you go no harm okay so we have a bad guy over here let's hit the binoculars and let's and we have one fixed zoom at some point I will do like I did in the FPS series and make it to where you can use the mouse wheel and increase or decrease your zoom levels of your binocular and sniper scope we'll set some zoom levels but for now um, we're going to use a fixed one, and the binoculars do still keep the crosshair, and I'll probably change the crosshair system to be a little bit different in binoc mode, so that maybe you could tag something or whatever, but then whenever you go back into your regular view, see, I am in um, first person view, so I can still shoot. When you shoot the bad guy, you see you get little puffs of red blood coming out, but if you shoot something else, it just makes a little spark effect. So, shoot. characters, whether they're bots or players, you see blood, but not whenever you do that. There's no ammo count. You see, I forgot to set my health back to um, full when I respawn, so I need to fix that. And that's uh, a quick fix. See, if I go back to third person view, and then I engage my binoculars. Cool, I'm using binoculars. I can see, oh, there's an exploding barrel up there. To watch out for that. You know, I can use this for scouting around and whatnot. And then whenever I get out of binocular mode, I go back to the mode of view that I was currently in whenever I went into binocular mode. The car, the lights are a temporary thing on here, but one of the things that I did with the car was whenever you shoot it and it takes enough damage, it then changes its form to that. But if it gets blown up all the way, it explodes and causes radial damage. You see, it actually was enough to kill me, but it also turned the car into this nasty burnt hulk. So that's awesome. Um, I like that. Um, there were boards going from building to building over here, but there was no way of getting up. I'm going to show you this location just because I don't want to be the that guy that puts a secret into a map and doesn't tell everybody. So you can come over here to this building and you can jump up. Well, as you get on top of the building and now you can actually use this to um, walk from building to building. And that's that. Um, it did have some issues with the small propane cylinder whenever it exploded. If for some reason it just didn't like um, being mixed up with a bunch of other ones. So what I had over here was in the original map, there were four barrels that explode, you know, the, the red barrels. There were a couple of regular propane cylinders and then the tall propane cylinders. And so what I did was, was trying to get it to where you could do this. Boom, if you're too close to it, or if you see another guy running next to it, you can blow it up, detonate it, and it's, you know, going to kill him. But what's happening is the small propane cylinder actually didn't like being destroyed, so it was problematic. Any 
of the the bots you see running around are killable for now they're set to just respawn so we have plenty of targets to shoot at um, but enough chit chat alright so let's get into the quick fix for the the player's health so I'm gonna go into my character folder and my blueprints and let's fix the respawn another thing I was doing here is I'm reorganizing and cleaning up this mess so now I've got one for inputs, commands, and damage. They each have their own individual colors as well. Input stuff is going to be in this orange color. Um, this minty green, it's minty fresh, is for commands. And for right now, binoculars and sniper zoom are going to go into that category. And anything relating to damage is going to go into here. And I can just keep moving things around and I can instantly know if it's damage related I'm gonna come over here and do this if it's command related or control related I know where to go so the monocular feature and we're gonna use the same setup for the sniper zoom with some tweaks here and there is um, you press B you've got a flip-flop and it sets use binox, binox yes or no um, currently there's no animation associated with it there will be whenever I get done with it but for now what it does is if you're when you're using the binox by hitting the V key, a B key one time B as in Bravo or binoculars it changes you to first person view it says that you cannot shoot so it sets can shoot defaults it creates the widget for the binoculars adds it to your viewport and it changes your field of view from the default 90 down to 20 and that's an important for the zoom factor and that's what what gives you your zoom itself. When you hit the B key again to put them away, then you set using binox to false, which will then trigger the actual widget to remove from parent. And then it sets your current view based on what it was before. And I'll quickly show that whenever you press V for your view, it sets your current view to one or zero. Zero being the default, which is third person view. So, if your current view was zero, which is third person view, then yes, return back to third person view, set field of view back to 90, which is default. But if you were in the first person view, it sets it back to FPS view and can shoot to true. And then, of course, set your field of view back to, to normal. So, that's what we're going to do with the, the scope right back here let's go ahead and add in one more little thing here and when we set is dead to false or to true I'm sorry false so that we're now back alive again we need to set health and let's give this our max health value which currently is 100 and we'll do some more tweaks on it here and there so this should solve the health issue so now if I come in here and find something that can kill me, like this over here, now keep in mind again, the grenades will be removed and also currently was set up to where you walk over and you press the one key and it would place a, um, if you had any mines, it would actually place a landmine. But the grenades themselves, they're working, they were great, but I need to fix the replication so that um, whenever I throw a grenade the client can see it also or if the client throws a grenade I can see their grenade and that's not happening and I, I know how to fix it I just don't want to take the time to fix it just yet so alright our health is back to full our grenade counts correct we're good to go so let's take a look at that and get down to business we want snipper zoom give us some more room to work with in here and our same category so we need to first off create a key binding for it and the key that I'm going to go with is right mouse button so when we hit the right mouse button we need to ask we, we need to go ahead and tell it to put us into our sniper view but then if we hit it again we can either do it of two ways here. We can do it off of pressed, so and released. 
if we do it this method, when you hold down the right mouse button, you're going to zoom in. And then when you let go of the mouse button, it will go back to your original view. And that's kind of a, a conundrum. Some people like to use it momentary. Some people like to use it as a switch. Later on, a system will be created so that you can actually use that a player settings, go to your menu, and actually set up things like that. But for now, I like the sniper zoom and a toggle method. So that's what I'm going to do because it's my freaking game. Eh. So, yeah, sorry. Um, so we're going to run it off of a flip-flop. But if you didn't want to, you can avoid this step. And instead of going from here and here, you could just go from here and here. So it's that's the only main difference is this use flip-flop or not is what we're, we're telling it to do. We're, we're choosing to use a flip-flop. So when we choose to go into sniper mode, we are already in third person view so we know that we're we're there um, we need to go ahead and create a widget now I have already got the masks like the one that I use for for binox I've already got a mask for the scope it's in texture you can't see it here but this is what it's gonna look like your entire screen is black and you have a duplex style across here in, a, in the center of it and the circle and of course in the checkerboard area is the area you're going to be able to see everything else is black and masked off and you won't be able to see so with that this is what your view is going to look like and that's what we want well, that's what I want so let's go in here and to our UI folder widgets folder and I've already created that's the one for the binox We've already got one for the crosshair and for the player info and all that kind of stuff. But focus, bro, focus. User interface, widget blueprint, and um, sniper underscore scope underscore W. So this is our sniper scope radical. Later on, I will have different assault scopes and red dot scopes and um, what have you, and I can make a different one for each one. So if I want to use the sniper scope widget, it's going to call this widget. And this is a really complicated thing here. Um, so first, we need to make sure we have a um, using scope variable as a boolean. We're going to compile and save. Now we're going to come back in here, and this is where it gets really complicated on how to make that thing work. I mean, this is going to take a lot of effort. you got to drag this all the way over to here, anchor it to full screen, your offsets, 0, 0, 0, and 0 for your offsets. I know this is complicated, and it's very in-depth, so we're going to go to our, where the hell are you, textures, duplex. Go back in here and open up our brush. All right, here's the hard part. We got to... Uh, okay, there we go. Um, so that's it for this part. And I'm going to compost and save. And now we're going to get in here and add the only code that's going to be in this entire thing. Um, let's go into the graph. And until I come up with a better method, I have actually been going through and getting rid of as many event ticks as possible. They're great for short-term use, but you want to weed out as many as possible until I decide to come back in here and find a better method for this, this is what we're going to get. So we want to cast to our player. In my case, it's player underscore base. And I want to get player character. And I'm just going to ask one question. Well, this is the right video. So far, this is... Um, this is this is where I'm at, and I'll show this again here. And I will make the the the, the scope mask radical. Um, blah, blah, blah. I can't speak English today. If you want the freaking mask, <laughs> learning how to speak now. Um, if you want it, let me know, and I'll drop it in my Discord channel. It's a small file. Same thing with the binox. That's all I did was I dropped it in here, anchored it in full screen, and took out all the offsets so it filled the entire screen. And all it is is a black screen, and I went in here and I put a circle in that was dead center, 
and emptied it out. I, I did it in, in GIMP is how I made this. So everything outside the screen. If you wanted to, to be black, this is the way you would do it. If you want to use a background blur, I'm sure there's a way of doing it. Um, you would probably do the same thing. Do a, um, a full screen of the background blur, which can be found in special effects. Background blur. So if you could do like a blurry effect here and make it to where it's actually blurry for everything else being blurry except for the center portion of your scope ring. I'm sure you could do it if you wanted to do it that way, but you know, my current method here is just to have it everything black. And I'll show you again how you know, I'm doing the transitions back and forth. So on this in the the event tech, all we're doing is we're casting to our player and we're asking use sniper um let's see scope using scope we're going to get if we're using scope and if we're going to run a branch naturally from that branch if we're not using our scope then what we want to do is remove from parent Coolio, yeah, just let me know what you need. You know me. I love my peoples. So that's it. That's all we have to do for our sniper scope widget. Is in our designer, drop an image in, anchor it to full screen, which is that guy. And then um, once you drop that image in, as I said, just you don't have to worry about Z orders or anything else right now. Um, you just anchor it to full screen set all your offsets to zero and that's it for here the graph that's it event tech cast your player base get player character ask if you're using the scope put a branch if you're not using it remove from parent it is that super simple on on that part so now we can get down to the guts of it so again this is the binox and i'll show you since you just just joined me here whenever you're playing around uh, well what I've got it set to do is, if you notice, I am in third-person view. I'm going to go to my binoculars. See, it zooms in, and I'm in my binocular view. I can pan around, look around. Everything is great. I will, again, I will make it to where you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out, but not yet. Um, it takes a little bit longer, not much longer, but um, for right now, I just want to get the basic functionality of the Binox and for the uh, the sniper scope. So I kept the cross here in the Binox just because I'd like to be able to set up a marking system or whatever, maybe a rangefinder, so you can click on it and it will report back the distance to target or whatever else. That'll be cool because I plan on doing an artillery sim system later, and yeah, you'll just have to wait for that one. That one's going to be a cool thing. So. I was in third person view when I went into binocular mode, hit B to come back out, I go back into my original third person. But if I'm in first person view where I can, boom, I can shoot stuff and blow things up, and then eh, I'm in shooting mode, I'm going to hit my binox. Well, I can't shoot while I'm in binox mode, even though I was originally in that, um, that mode. Now when I hit my B to go back out of it, I go back to the same one. I'm back into my first person view and I can go back to shooting things. So I want that same basic functionality to work here. And again, all I did was whenever you hit B for a binox, well, what I did do is whenever I'm creating my first person view and I'm going between my cameras using my um, controller ro uh, rotation yaw, use crosshair. And using crosshairs, I built a function for that. And I'll show you that because I had to go back to it and setting can shoot to true while you're in first person mode. You hit um, to go into third person view, it changes your cameras, make sure that you're not using the controller rotation yaw or crosshair and you can't shoot. So there's no shooting in third person view. So now when you hit V to change your, your views, it asks if you're using your binox. If you are using your binox, you can't do anything. So it keeps you from changing your view while you're in your binocular view. It's kind of a fail-safe. 
So if I am not using my binox, then my first V press is going to put me in first person view and sets my current view to one. But if, if I hit it again, it's going to put me back in third person view and set my current view to zero using a variable that I created called current view. So now when we're using our binox, we have B run our flip-flop. So if I press B the first time, it sets using binox to true. It forces me into first person view and then it says no you can't shoot anymore. It creates the widget with a reference to the get player controller. It adds the widget to the viewport, sets my field of view to 20 for my FPS camera because that's the camera that we're using. So now my my field of view, this is where I'm getting my zoom factor. Okay, So if I hit B to get out of binocular mode, it says, no, I'm not using binoculars. It asked me what my current view was, and if it was equal to zero, then put me back in third person view. If it's false, that means I was in first person view, so put me in first person view, re-enable shooting, and then sets my field of view for both of them back to 90. I hope that's clear. I mean, that's feel free to ask questions along the way, but but again, it's setting our view back to normal again, our field of view back to normal again. So let's start replicating this stuff here. And what do we need to, to do? We need to, first off, we need to set using scope. It's, there's a lot of variables involved, but it makes it into a nice working system. So I'm going to paste a second one in there, because this is what we're going to do here, is we're going to get from, when we hit it the first time, we are using the scope. And I'm going to drag that down, and we'll get back to him in just a moment. Not a problem. I mean, I'm not going to make this available to download or anything, but here's the thing. As you're watching a video, you, it, I automatically save these streams. You can come back later and freeze frame, and then wait a few seconds later, freeze frame, and, and just pause the thing so you can actually go back and, and look directly at the code. So I'm actually not going to give you the code for free. If you want it, it's $4,000. Um, you know, I'm just kidding. But what you got to do is just freeze the video and get it for free. You know, I could sell this. I'm going to sell this game later. That's why I'm, I'm taking my time to try to make sure that I get each of these things working. Again, everything that's in this project right now is replicated except for the grenades are not working the way that I want them to. I can fix it, but I'll take time to do that later. Um, and the landmines. And I'll show you those landmines because they're, they're kind of sneaky. Um, just remind me about the landmines and I'll show you those. <laughs> Alright, so we're setting using the scope. And we are already in our first person view because we're not going to be able to use this if we're in our binoc view or anything else so let's prevent that from happening so let's actually I'm just going to go ahead and break this line and I'm going to put in a branch and I'm going to first off start by asking are we using binox if we're using binoculars then this shit don't work. <laughs> um, we're probably gonna have to come back in here with this. We're asking if we're, we're we're setting using binox, but we need to go ahead and just spread this out a little bit to make some room. And in this, we need to ask if we're using the scope. And if we're using the scope, we need to disable this system. So you can't go into the scope mode while you're in binocular mode. You actually have to be at your normal view of third person view to be able to do all that. So I'm just going to run a branch here. And trying to move things around a little bit. And break that. We want it to go off of the faults. And we want to ask using scope. So we're going to ask that question right now. Are you using the scope, you son of a bitch? No. Oh, so, then tough. You can't use your damn sniper scope while you're using Binox. That'll prevent um, widgets from being placed on top of widgets in a way you won't like. 
So using scope, if you're using the scope, then tough teddy. If, if you're not using the scope, then you can use your binox. So same thing here. I'm going to set up, are you using your binox? No. All right, cool. Then you can live. So um, if you're using binox, then no, you cannot use this system. So we're running off the faults to our flip flop. And then we're going to set using our scope. And then start building the rest of our logic. Um, we're not going to worry about can shoot because we're already there. Um, um, another thing we need to, to ask ourselves is if we're in third person view and we're running around, do we want to be able to switch automatically into our first person view and use our sniper scope and start shooting? So if we're running around normal and we just hit that right mouse button, it'll snap us into a shooting mode and our scope's up. But then when we come out of the sniper zoom, we hit the right mouse button again, it's going to take us out. We want to go back to our third person view or do we want to force the player to be in first person view first and if you're not in the first person view, you can't make this system work. I actually like the first way. I know it sounds confusing as hell. Um, but, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set using scope. And no matter what view you're in, um, I want to go ahead and force you back into um, first person view. And I've already got that custom event set up for FPS view. So we're not going to force you into FPS view. So now you can shoot, okay? That's cool. You can go, as you're running around the map, and you suddenly you hit that right mouse button, it throws you into your first person view. You have the, the actual crosshair, the normal crosshair in the scope. But we need to also get rid of that little red crosshair. So... set use crosshair to false. I might have to go back and fix some of my other logic for the crosshair system. So we want to get rid of this, our regular crosshair, which is the red crosshair. And I will check that logic here in just a few minutes. We'll test things first. But so that's what we're going to do first is we're going to check to see if we're using our binox. If we're not, then now we can, we're going directly into our first person view doesn't matter what view we were in I'm gonna run into turning off my red crosshair that's in the middle of the screen and it's going to create a widget that widget is the sniper scope get our player controller and then we want to go ahead and add to viewport and this may end up being too long to fit my little narrow place here so I'll have to change it to a different category um, and move it somewhere else that's not a bad idea to go ahead and do that but let's make sure we, we get the rest of our logic going here I'm gonna add to viewport and we want to and I'm gonna copy this one actually no I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing here if you look at your FPS camera that you're using for that view, see your field of view is 90. That's your default. So I'm going to grab a reference to my FPS camera and I am going to set field of view. 20 looked pretty good. I'll juggle some other numbers here. Um, 20. There we go. So that's going to. And I'm going to go back and I'm, I'm recapping my logic so I can kind of keep my brain wrapped into it here. Um, when I hit the right mouse button, I'm going to check to see if I'm using my binox. If I am not using my binoculars, then I want to set using scope to true. That's going to enable the, the actual uh, widget to work. I'm going to force myself into first person view. So if I was in third person view before, it doesn't matter. It's going to force me from third person to first person view. It's going to remove my red crosshair. It's going to create the widget of the sniper scope that we created. It's going to add it to my viewport and set my field of view to 20. 
<sighs> okay, so that's not completely working for taking it back out. So I will finish fixing that logic, but I'm going to go ahead and test it here. So as I'm running around, I hit the right mouse button and bang, I go right into my sniper scope and now I've got my sniper scope. It's zoomed in and that works perfectly that way. Now if I right click and say no, I'm not using, it doesn't reset my zoom. So this is where we're going to go ahead and fix the rest of the logic on this. so that we can return to the view that we were in before. We want to go ahead and do like I did right over here and I want to get a reference to my current view. Now it doesn't matter that I've forced it into FPS view. Um, it's going to get it roughly here and it should allow me to switch back the way that I was before. So we're going to ask it on this. We're on a branch but we're going to run from the current view equal equal so I can get an equal integer and get over there if it is equal equal to zero which was our third person view if it's equal to uh, zero our third person view then we want to TPS view and let's go ahead and set use crosshair no third person doesn't have a crosshair so we don't need to worry about the crosshair going back in or not so we just want to go ahead and we'll bring this in here in just a minute so let's finish the bottom part of this logic so we're forcing us back to third person view and we're going to I'll go ahead and get it grab a reference to my FPS camera set field of view what I will end up doing later is I will actually create a variable that's called default view which is non zoomed but for now this will work I know that it's going to be 90 and that's what my default is so now if we were in third person view before it's going to return us back in third person view fix our field of view and we're good to go but if we were in first person view then even though we're already there I'm still gonna force it back to FPS view just as a failsafe and we know we want to set this but we need to go ahead and set use crosshair back to true which will allow us to use our um, or, or my um, crosshair where is crosshair use crosshairs create cross use crosshairs as a custom event and it does that it just creates the widget and adds it to the viewport that's all it does so my logic down here I need to make sure I set it back to yes that I can use it and then use crosshairs run that executable there and from here I can link this into that same node of set my field of view back to 90 in theory I think that's it <laughs> in theory and I'll recap everything after we, we take, you know, test everything and make sure it works so we're running around here we're in binocular mode and I hit right click it doesn't do a thing it's good I can't shoot in binoc mode clown you're so safe right now so I'm gonna hit B come out of my binocular mode I'm gonna, I'm in third person I'm gonna go into scope mode and I'm gonna shoot my, myself a, a zombie clown now I'm gonna hit the view key and okay we're gonna have to fix that you see I hit the V key and the cr red crosshair came back I hit it again and okay so we got to fix our logic it's not bulletproof yet so we gotta add more variables um, so on here we have <laughs> our V key um, 
we're using Binox. Let's go ahead and we need to do the same thing for get a reference to using scope. And it would be nice if I could just link that into the same one, but I can't. So I'm going to have to just lengthen this just a wee bit. So we know that from the faults node is where we want to be. We hit that V key. We want to make sure we're not using our Binox. And from this faults node, I'm going to add another branch key. And I'm going to break that again because I want this to also go from faults into there. And I'm just going to throw that here and ask that question. Are we using the scope? No, then yes. Now you can change your view. So that's going to prevent us from, while we're in the binocular mode, changing our view, or in scope mode, from changing our view. So that, that should fix that issue. Um, recapping the scope logic here. When we hit the right mouse button, we're asking, are we using the Binox? If it's true, then you ain't doing diddly squat. But if you're not using your Binox, and you just hit it the first time, you're going to set using the scope to true, you change the first person view, turn off the red crosshair, turn on your big scope crosshair with the widget, add it to the viewport, set your field of view to 20. Okay. Um, when you hit the right mouse button again, um, you're going to set using scope defaults, which is going to kill the scope uh, widget. It's going to check what your, your view was before you went into scope mode. So if you were in first person view, you hit it, you go into the scope, you hit it again, you come back to first person view. So we'll test all the functionality here again in a minute. But if you were in your current view of zero, which was gotten from our view changing thing, then if it was yes, if you were in third person view, you're going to go back to third person view. Your angle is getting refreshed. And if you were in first person view, it resets your crosshair and allows you to use the actual crosshair again and set your field of view. So I hope I hope this is clear because I I say it out loud and it confuses the crap out of me. So I can run around, I can jump, I can do things, everything's happy. I can't shoot while I'm in third person view. I'm gonna go to binoculars, I'm gonna pan around. God, that's an ugly clown. I can't shoot while I'm in binocular mode. And I can't go to the scope mode while I'm in the binocular mode. And a zombie hot dog man. Mm, lovely. So hit the B, go out of the binoculars, go to right now. I'm running around, I'm in third person view. Holy shit, there's a clown. I gotta kill him. And he is dead. I'm gonna blow up me a car. Now I'm gonna right I'm I'm gonna gonna hit the V to try to change my view. It's not working. I'm gonna hit B to try to go to my binoculars. It's not working. I'm gonna right click. It's gonna force me back out of my zoom mode from the scope and I go back into third person where I was before. Now I'm gonna go into first person mode and try to use my binoculars. It's gonna force me into this mode. I hit it, come back to where I was right click to go into scope mode, right click to come out, and I'm still in first person, and now I can go back to third person. So, uh, it works. <laughs> hey, look, we've got a barrel hiding in the weeds over there. I will still go back through and chase down event ticks throughout the uh, the entire game. If I can get rid of those, that's just going to help with the efficiency of the, of the project. Event ticks basically are running every second. So you don't want 400 event ticks constantly saying, Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Oh, you guys are shielded from the blast? I'll still kill your ass. So the, the scope functionality you can actually just snap into scope mode, shoot, snap back out of scope mode and keep running again. Um, you get to the point where, okay, I'm already still shooting here. Use my scope, and there it zooms in, zooms out, zooms in, zooms out. 
Yep, yeah, everything works. Oh my god, I'm gonna have a heart attack that it works. I'm sorry, I'm still still kind of geeky about the fact that um about this car. The lights suck. I looked at it, I'll fix the lights later or Skippy can do those or whatever, but shooting the car it suddenly changes to a damaged state and then you can shoot it until it blows up. I'll change the health level of it so it takes more to do that, but <coughs> that's cool. All right, let's save everything, and I'm going to close the player for just a moment. And let's go into my test map, and we'll show you that what's working with replication right now and what's not. This ma test map, now I, I'm going to add something to the shooting effect later, which is adding an impulse. So let's hit play, walk in here, and this pizza that's laying on the ground is actually a time bomb. So we're going to wait for just a few seconds, and boom, time bomb blows up, and it takes out the car with it. Okay, this right here is a pressure plate mine. Actually, it's the clock from the town. It's flipped upside down. So I can find a better model for the, uh, the actual landmine, walk over it, and boom, it blows up and kills you. And it has radial damage, and it killed the zombie next to him as well. Now go into the V mode and if you notice that this one right here, let's actually zoom in with since we have a sniper now, you can shoot this landmine or you can walk over it. And if you shoot it, it does the same thing. It blows up, kills people around it. Um, the exploding barrels, which let's go ahead and restart. The exploding barrels don't respawn. So snap into scope mode. You see I got some target dummies there. They just vanish. They're just they're just they're not characters, they're just actors. Um, propane cylinder. Let's actually step away from it here, and you see it blows up just nice. We have small propane cylinder over here. It blows up. We have a light here, big light pole, and and you see the light just came on. You can shoot the light out, and it will go away. And then here in a little bit, it'll come right back on. So if you're trying to sneak past something and you shoot a light. You better be using a silenced gun so you don't make noise. But, um, yeah, you can temporarily disable the lights. The pizza, this is the pickup for the pizza. See, it's rotating. It's at an angle and stuff like that. Lower right-hand corner of the screen, there is um, grenade count and mine count. So now I walk over that. Now I have a mine, and I can pick up another grenade. Those will respawn, and they replicate correctly on the ground. Um, so I... I set a max limit of five grenades and three mines. So now, if I run over here, I, I can't pick up this grenade because I've already got five. But now I can pick up the mine, the the pizza mine. I'm at my max of three. If I walk over, I can't pick it up anymore. And for right now, what I've done is set the um, the number one key to deploy the landmine at a specific location in front of you and after like 10 seconds or whatever the pizza mine will blow up <laughs> so I'll probably take that one out and I'll probably go back with this one right here so if you actually step on it boom it blows up kills you does radial damage to stuff around you and then lovely um, this one cannot be shot and detonated but this dumbass can walk on top of it and blow it up and kill me and everybody else around it. So, yeah, that's where we are on this project. Everything is working. And to show the replication working, I'm going to sneeze first and then uh, change the number of players to run a new editor window. And again, I, running multiple monitors, I can actually run... I've got the server runs on my left monitor and the client runs on the, the main monitor. But for now, I will just do this. So we can see what's going on. And you notice the server sees that the car exploded, but the client also sees that the thing exploded, and it was done because of the pizza mine. So the pizza mine is currently not working correctly. It's not replicating the visibility correctly and all that stuff. So I'm going to operate as the um, the client, but I'm going to face the um, 
for right now the server is looking over here at these three items he's um, really closely investigating that propane tank so we're going to come over here as the client we're going to hide behind the car snap this ooh looks really crappy in this mode but we shoot the propane cylinder it blows up and kills home cheese and he responds and if you watch his health bar as I'm shooting him he's taking health away and now he's dead so again right now the respawn system will get changed but for now it's that's just what it's gonna do walk over here and steal the grenade and you see replication wise it goes away from the ground the way that it should be and it comes back same thing with um, the pizza mine um, which I'm gonna take out because it's just not working correctly you see it's not working correctly for the the client until I get it resolved I'm gonna take it out completely but by having a max cap it prevents you from getting too many to begin with so okay as a server now we're gonna look right this way so we can see the light the mini propane cylinder the guys over in the corner the the gasoline tanks or exploding tanks and we're gonna operate here as the client so as the client I'm going to zoom in and I'm gonna find the propane boom replicates exploding and it turned off the light from the, the damage so I'm gonna shoot the light manually and it goes out just wonderfully if I come over here and I shoot the barrels they explode and you can see it killed this guy and that replicates just fine as well these guys respawn if I shoot this guy and kill him he vanishes on both screens so yeah everything seems to be working um, what about the exploding mine boom it blows up but I gotta fix the replication of it disappearing um, but that's not going to be on the regular map it's just going to be in development this one you cannot blow up by shooting but if I walk over it boom it blows up and goes away correctly that one works perfect the shootable one I still have to tweak a little bit so but pretty much everything is done with replication and honestly I could go ahead and set up a, a and release a temporary demo of this as a full multiplayer um, shooter demo and again since my final product is going to be on Steam this one I'm going to set up initially is just going to be on Google Drive as a, a test version to run around and test with a few people and since it's the first release is actually going to go on to itch.io but the more towards final product is actually going to be released on Steam so that's why I'm keeping my normal Steam architecture in here so what will happen is let's go back into one and selected viewport so we're back at single player the current lobby map doesn't really have Diddly Squad in here but let's go to the actual map of the main menu map and now if I hit play actually exit game um, if I hit play in standalone game this is the way that the game is going to actually work um, I'll worry about fancying up the other menu later but you've got well I'm not on Steam because I just had to restart my computer a little while ago actually, I, I am on Steam well no I'm not so you need to be on Steam for it to work correctly so I'm gonna go ahead because it'll say right there go connect the Steam dummy I just restarted my computer after doing another video update or driver update so I'm actually gonna go ahead and run Steam turn it on so this is what's necessary for making it work correctly is you need to have Steam running in the background it's not currently going through Steam for much but it is retrieving your Steam avatar and username and that's the way that I've got everything configured at some point I'm gonna set up the characters so that um, maybe if I want their over the top of their head will be a floating username and it'll show their actual Steam username so come on Steam do your crap so I can close you close I don't care close I don't care um, so now that Steam's running in the background whenever I hit play in, in 
standalone game, it'll come up like this. It'll say shooter demo. That's what it's going to be called until I, I'm going to name it actually later. So now you can see you've got my username and my Steam avatar in the upper right hand corner. And if I hit single player, it's going to go and run directly into my single player map. Wow, it is running a wee bit slow. Unless I've got a problem here. Okay, it did load. I just wasn't being patient. Ah, I'm old. I ain't got patience for this shit. Runs fast as hell once it's packed. So if you run single player, it will go directly into the map. And apparently, um, I've told it to go to the wrong map anyway. So I'm going to fix that. When that breaks like that, you can just, you know, alt tab, close it manually. So let's fix that really quickly. I want it to go to my Battle Royale map for demonstration. But since I've got other asset packs in here that use the same name for their map of demonstration, what I'm going to do is I am going to load the demonstration map for Polygon Battle Royale and this will be the demo map for right now for um, running around and for a temporary demo. I'll actually add the Polygon Town in as well but for now we need to go ahead and save this as a different name and a location that's more appropriate. So I'm going to hit um, File Save Current As and we're just going to call this um, BR underscore map and it's already in my maps folder that I want it to be in so now I'm going to save and now I don't have to worry about going into there anymore because it's actually here you can see down here it'll say level BR map so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F2 control C and then click over here so I've just copied the name of the map and now I can go into my UI and for those of you who have my my um, simple multiplayer steam template and this is how you would actually change the map go to the main menu widget go to the graph single player button or click it there and paste in BR map even though it's not necessary you don't need to worry about it here but I'm going to go over here and try not to show too much of my code. Um, go to my other open level, which is in the multiplayer portion. And I'm going to paste in the map. Compile, save. Because I don't have the other map configured yet with spawn points and zombies and all the cool stuff. So, that being done and that being done. And let's close all these things down. I'm going to go ahead and run back to my main menu map and now play it in standalone and this should be the way it's going to be for being packaged up unless I can think of anything else I want to throw in here short term but now we're going to go into single player it's going to load up and you can now snap and shoot a clown in his crotch and do your thing I will, before I release it, I will get rid of the grenades. I just tossed a grenade in there. So I'm going to re remove the... I may may leave the grenades in, but I'm going to disable the mines and take it off of the, um, the, the actual player HUD. So now if I hit Escape, I can go back to the main menu. Hit Multiplayer. If I want to see if anybody else is hosting a game... I hit find, I wait a couple seconds, eh, I'm not seeing anything. I'm going to hit find lobby, let it refresh, and there, somebody's got a game playing. You may find games, especially like this, that has no name on it. Because this has, does not have a Steam app ID associated with it, other than a developer ID, you may find some rogue games. If you try to join it, it's just not going to work. So, if you're hosting a game, you tell everybody, hey, it's Beefalo Bart's damn game. 
tell them what to look for and then you hit make it'll go ahead and create the server and put you in any one of the random spawn points and you can start the mayhem of blowing shit up and killing things and and whatnot. I can leave the mines in here because I there I didn't put any pickups, so there's none to pick up, so I can leave that in there for now. So you can commence to kicking some butt. He already had damage from the car and the, the tank blowing up, so it didn't take a full, you know, four shots to kill him. I may throw a few more zombies in here, but I think that's pretty good so far. Um, I've got like five or six random spawns placed around the map. Um, I like that zoom. That works good. And you can still go into V to change into the first person view and be able to shoot. So you can still do that as well, run around. I don't really like this crosshair, but it was a, a quick move. So you can swap back and forth through your views, use your binoculars, check out your zombies. In another video, I'll actually go ahead and um, set up some more features. But I wanted this one to be about the, the sniper scope. And hit escape, go back to the main menu, and exit game. This is all about the sniper scope, getting it working, refining the binoculars, and the view changing stuff. So everything kind of meshes together and works correctly. Um, I've got everything else that's actually onto the current map that's going to be used in the, the the early early version of this shooter game. Um, everything that's on there is going to be fully replicated, so combat works just fine. If you shoot another player, they're going to die. They're going to respawn. I may actually work on a respawn system for for this before I actually release it, but I don't know. This system works. Just the respawn needs to be tweaked a little bit. Um, but other than that, it's ready for play testing. So what I may do is just go ahead and just do a play testing. And I will consider whether I'm going to change the respawn system or not. And it's the location. You, you shoot somebody and you kill them. Right now you know that they're going to spawn a thousand um, centimeters above and just going to fall down. So, you know courtesy would say if you're just kind of goofing around testing with people don't sit there and and spam kill them as soon as they reappear that's why i'm, I'm debating whether or not i'm going to actually change the respawn system and actually let the map itself so if i just go into the map and you've got the player starts what i may actually do is create an actual spawn point Remove all the players um, um, start. Well, leave all the player starts where they are, but create a an actual item called a respawn location. And what I can do is, in a similar area like where this player start is, is I can place one in the map right here, and it will be an actual respawn location that the map itself will know the location of them, and whenever you begin to play it's actually going to set a variable to the player to know where the respawns loca locations are and then I can do a random setup to where it's a random picker so it'll start there or there or there or there or there or wherever set up a random respawn location and if you want me to do that in a, in a video which I may do that in, in the next video I said I want to keep these no more than an hour and then I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna come back um, I enjoy doing this, and I, I love helping people out, and I like making cool game shit, and, you know, we'll just have some fun together. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video, because the sniper zoom works exactly how I want it to. The binoculars are working the way I want them to. The game is fully replicated for everything that I've got in here that's going to be in this map in the playable demo version. So everything is where I need it to be. So the next video will address the respawn, I guess. All right. I want to thank everybody for watching, and so I'll take about a 15-minute break, and I'll come right on back, and I'll do the uh, respawn system. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and we will see you soon.